I've been down with FNAF since day one. I remember a random night in 2014, I was on the Google Play Store looking for some random games to play and get addicted to, when I saw this creepy ass bear staring at me, and it creeped me the hell out. I literally couldn't sleep without thinking of that image, bro. So I said F it and looked up what it was from, and from there I became hooked. All the theories, the songs, the animations, you a real one if you remember Tony Cry Night. But one thing I never cared about or looked into was the story until like FNAF 6 Ultimate Custom Night Dish, where I was like, okay, this this, this shit seems kind of cool. It wasn't. I have never seen a story so obviously put together with no end goal like FNAF. This story is the epitome of doing shit with no plan whatsoever. No disrespect to Scott whatsoever, he's a good human being, but you could just tell he was doing shit as he was going, and whatever looked cool or felt cool to him, he just put it in. This nigga's biggest op is MatPat, a fucking theorist. This nigga has literally at times changed the plot just because MatPat's theory was close to right. I'm dead ass serious. Legitimately, every game after 3, the Lord just kept getting fucked over and over and over again to the point of no return. Before I get into this hellhole, I just want to ask some of the people that know the Lord. Where would you place this location? A serious question? I'm going to ask it again after this, but where, where put this location on the timeline and make it make sense. I'll check in with them in a bit, but for now, let's get into the game that started it all. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night. Not gonna lie, the first game has next to no lore. <laughs> Understandably so because it's the first game Scott didn't think it was gonna blow up the way it did and I wouldn't either after the failed Kickstarter Besides the missing kids poster and the getting stuffed into suits the biggest lore thing we get revealed in the first game is the bite of 87 Which we still don't have a definitive answer to and it's been eight Years that and the phone guy dying and Golden Freddy now off rip the two biggest questions we have are What is the bite of 87? And what is Golden Freddy? Those are the biggest questions we have so far, right? So far, the lore isn't bad. Yet. <laughs> she is such a bad bitch, though. I will fuck the shit out of that robot, man. All right, now for FNAF 2. And the lore really gets turned the fuck up here. Scott wasn't playing around. First things first, this is a prequel. So we gotta move this before FNAF 1. So now FNAF 2 is first in this timeline. The main reason being the fact that Phone Guy is still alive and this takes place in the 80s. But the main thing lore wise FNAF 2 has is the death mini games. All of these mini games involved a new character and arguably the most important character in the entire series, Purple Guy. The most important mini game lore wise take care of the children. You play as Freddy Fazbear feeding children to kids inside a pizzeria. But one of the kids outside the pizzeria is locked out and gets murked by Purple Guy after he pulls up on them in his car. For now we don't know who that kid is but trust me they are really fucking important. In the Go 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 mini game you play as Foxy where you run into a room and after the like the third or fourth time you run into the room all the kids are dead. On the run where the kids are dead Purple Guy is behind Foxy watching them run into that room. In another very important mini game, Give Gifts, Give Life, the marionette is giving gifts to these kids, giving life to them by putting animatronic heads on them. In the last mini game, you play as Freddy Fazbear following the marionette around the pizza place. You can either follow her or wander off, or rarely get attacked by the purple guy. While in the background is saying, save them. If you get chased by the purple guy, it'll pop up saying you can't. Now I know that is a lot of new lore added on, but it's still cohesive, okay? It's still not a train wreck yet okay now the new questions we're asking are who is this purple guy who is jeremy fitzgerald who is that last kid that pops up in the give gifts mini game and why did the pizza place get closed down on night six there's a few more minor discoveries and questions we have but the ones i named off are the most important ones and now for fnaf 3 and the peak of this franchise lore wise i killed you and you killed me charlotte why'd you kill that guy motherfucker he killed himself so first of all FNAF 3 isn't even in a pizzeria, it's in the fucking tourist attraction. A tourist attraction based on the murders from the Freddy Fazbear's franchise. So this is before 1 and after 2. Or after 1 and 2. Either way, it's after 2 definitively. On the first night, there isn't much to deal with because there isn't anything in the building to deal with until the second night where they find one. A real one. You have no idea how much I love that quote. These niggas done found an actual animatronic and brought his ass in the building for you to deal with. 
good luck. We also later find out about spring lock suits, which are suits Fazbear employees would get inside of to play with the kids, you know, have fun with them. There are springs in the suits that will be pushed back with the mechanism, and these are very dangerous because if these shits went off and somebody was inside of them, they're literally, they're, they're cooked, they're dead, which is foreshadowing to what this nigga is. His name is Spring Chat, by the way. One of the coolest and hardest designs in horror ever. The mini games are back again and they are way different from last time. In these ones, you play as each animal charm walking around the pizzeria. In each one, you get led to a back room where you then get dismantled and murked. On night five, you play the same mini game as The Crying Child, where you go to the back rooms to find Purple Guy getting surrounded by other crying children. You scare him into running into a spring bonnie suit where he lasts for a little bit and then boom, the spring clock's going off, killing him. After that, a newspaper pops up saying that Fazbear Frights, the tourist attraction, burns to the ground. And if you brighten the newspaper image, you can see Springtrap in the back, still alive. That's the bad ending. To get the good ending, which is by the way the most bullshit and convoluted methods ever, by looking on the arcade through the cameras, clicking on hitting cupcakes, and look putting in codes on wall tiles, we can get access to secret minigames. But you have to glitch each minigame to get the actual ending. After you glitch each minigame, you get the last minigame, the happiest day minigame. After that, you get the regular good ending, where all the animatronic heads are soulless and dark, signifying that their souls are now freed and liberated. And that is a perfect conclusion to the series. We find out who Purple Guy is, we find out who the kids are, we get a conclusion, in quotations, conclusion to Purple Guy's character and a conclusion to the kids. Their souls are now free. Purple Guy is dead. Fazbear's Fright is gone. Problem solved. End franchise. But that's if we lived in a perfect world. And you know damn well we don't. On to the next game. Jesus. Okay, so the first night is never usually that bad in any of the games. So I'll play through. This is where everything goes downhill. Strap in, y'all. FNAF 4 opens with a countdown to a party. And where we play as a kid that's crying and sad, scared of the party. For some odd reason, he also gets picked on by his bigger brother a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Another key thing is that he's scared of the animatronics. This is the reason he doesn't want to go to the party. He's scared of them. Throughout the game, after each night, we play a mini game as a little kid getting guided by our Fred Bear plushie. Who? I'm not sure. It plays a main role. He plays a main role, but I'm not sure who he is 100%. I'm probably going to figure out later on in this video myself while I'm editing. So, yeah. After night five, the mini game is now you getting bullied to the point of where your older brother and his friends pick you up and shove you into Fredbear's mouth. Where after a bunch of squirming and trying to get out, Fredbear's jaw clamps down on your head and boom, you're dead. Or are you? After night six, we see the crying child next to the animatronics and the Fredbear plushies. They all disappear and lastly, the Fredbear plushie disappears saying he'll put him back together. Who is telling this to him is still debated to this day. Thanks, Scott. So we don't know for sure who's saying he'll put him back together, but that's what we know. He'll get put back together. That's up for interpretation. So boom, we cracked the code. The buy value seven. That's it, right? Thanks, Scott. So now the game order is four, two, one, three. And we still don't know the buy to 87. Now there's more questions. Who is this kid? Who is his brother? And what the fuck is in that chest? But we also still don't know to this day. On to the next game, bro. On to the next game. Fuck up. You see, half the block is still in the crib. Half the block is still in the house, bro. All the things that came outside, I'm like, wait a minute, bro. This thing, I think he got the wrong or something. He needs to oh, hey, look, it's the least replayable FNAF game. So off rip, the game opens up with William Afton, aka Springtrap, Purple Guy, the murderer, talking about his animatronics and gassing them up to an investor. And the investor seems really suspicious and skeptical about him and tries to warn William and tells him, this shit is kind of sketchy, dog. I'm not going to lie to you, but William doesn't really care. The first night doesn't have anything in it, but night two is interesting as fuck and lore relevant because the baby becomes alive and starts fucking talking to you and trying to protect you in quotations. You'll see why I put quotations later on. In the next night, if you go to Circus Baby Room, in spite of hand units orders, you actually get extra dialogue that's really lore relevant and interesting from Baby herself, where she talks about how she used to be on stage one specific time and how whenever she was on stage, she would always kept the children in the room. And one time there was one kid. She opened up her stomach, showed her some ice cream, 
and they were screaming, then it stopped. She fucking killed that kid. But not only do we hear about it, we see it later on. We find out that that's the real reason the location got closed down and not gas leaks as it was said beforehand. Later in the night we get kidnapped by Circus Foxy and fuck this entire section of the game, oh my god. Next night is more talking to maybe and then we send her to the scooping room. After that she tells us to go to a specific room and then we end up in the scooping room where we find out baby's true intentions. She fucking lied to us to get our body so they could go to the real world. Her and everyone else in the establishment. Freddy, Ballora, Foxy, all the niggas, they just wanted my body and they are working together. Together they're entered and they've been trapped in this bitch forever and now they got a chance to get out with you nigga. Besides Afton's voice lines finding out he's British, I know scary, we also hear a little girl in between nights who also has a British accent so you can assume that that's Afton's daughter. The most popular and general answer for what happens to the girl is that she's William's daughter and she's the baby victim that gets scooped up by baby when she's the only person in the room that one specific time on stage and later we see that in the death mini games. Speaking of, fuck that bullshit ass mini game bro. Another thing we learn in this game after piecing it together ourselves is that the main character we play as this game is Michael Afton, William's son. Meaning Michael is a nigga that gets scooped and becomes a habiter for Ender. After each custom night, we see that William's body while inhabiting Ennard is getting fucking cooked, bro. Like, after each night, people start seeing how horrifying his body is becoming, and they start hiding from him due to how scary this nigga is looking. To the point where William throws up Ennard and they dip from his body because of how cooked this shit is, bro. But baby keeps him alive. She says you won't die over and over again to the point where he doesn't. He comes back to life, just like his dad as a lifeless corpse. Or a corpse full of life, actually. After beating the hardest custom night mode, we get a cutscene where Michael talks to his dad, saying that he will find him. Either meaning he's gonna find him to fuck you up, or just find him to, I don't know, get to see his dad. He can be either or, dog. There's also a fake alternate ending where Ender follows you home after you beat the Ender Knight, but yeah. Now, with all that out the way, if 3 was the perfect finale for the franchise, it would be this game 100%. Let's go. Shut up. You shut up. That's why your shoes are raggedy. That's why Charlie's dead. <laughs> Dead as hell. What you she got? What you she got on in the puppet? I could say a lot about Pre Three Simulator. Uh, it has one of the best openings in a video game ever, especially horror. About how the, all the lore secrets within the mini games of the pizzeria that you can buy and get. But I'm just gonna focus on the endings to keep it simple and short because this video is getting kind of long, kind of long, kind of long. But yeah, I'm gonna focus on the endings. Real quick though, the main theme of the game is to get these animatronics and better be pizzeria. By getting these animatronics, I mean salvaging animatronics after each night. The game is emphasized this by the announcer guy saying you want them all in here by the end of the week. Keep that in mind. And that is the main ending, the canon ending, once you get all of them in the, in the building at the end of the week. That's the canon ending, which I'm going to talk about after I talk about the other endings. So let's get to that. The bad ending is when you literally don't do any salvages for the entire week and you get scolded for it at the end of the week. The mediocre ending is when you don't buy anything for your pizzeria so it just stays the same as it is from when you began and you get scolded for that too for being a lazy ass nigga. The blacklisted ending, the one where nobody knows how to consistently get and has a different strategy to get it every time you ask, you just get blasted, blacklisted and fired. The bankrupt ending is self explanatory when you run out of money and apply for bankruptcy and you get fired. The insanity ending, however, is very low relevant and is canon because it has something to do with the canon ending. So listen up. When you buy a specific item called the Egg Baby Data Archive and go to the Night Guard section and press on the blue button, I think, you'll start to hear a nigga talk about his regrets and his past and shit he wished he didn't do and shit he could have done, while shit on the screen pops up like Lefty, The Scooper, and Rash. We also learn about Remnant here too, which is pretty big. We also get a bomb dropped on us when this nigga says he feels guilty for unknowingly playing a part in William Afton's murders by helping him bring up the Fazbear brand and creating the robot suits that he used to kill the kids in. So that combined with the books which I'll talk about later in a rant cause don't get me started on those fucking books that this is Henry, I don't know his last name, Henry Emily, I don't fucking know, Henry aka the co-founder to Fazbear Animatronics. After this, we get fired and sent to Arkham Asylum for knowing too much. Now, time for the perfect bow tie to this franchise. 
on the last day after salvaging all the animatronics like you were supposed to and completing all your tasks, baby pops up and starts talking to you. Basically shit talking, saying you're not fucked because we're all in this bitch and we're gonna fuck you up, nigga. You shouldn't have let us in, but now we're gonna kill you because of it. But she gets interrupted by the most iconic speech in this franchise and one of the greatest speeches in gaming. I'm not even gonna say anything, just listen, dog. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Elizabeth, if you still even remember that name. But I'm afraid you've been misinformed. You are not here to receive a gift, nor have you been called here by the individual you assume, although you have indeed been called. You have all been called here, into a labyrinth of sounds and smells, misdirection and misfortune. A labyrinth with no exit, a maze with no prize. You don't even realize that you are trapped. Your lust for blood has driven you in endless circles, chasing the cries of children in some unseen chamber, always seeming so near, yet somehow out of reach. But you will never find them. None of you will. This is where your story ends. And to you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing not intended for you. Although there was a way out planned for you, I have a feeling that's not what you want. I have a feeling that you are right where you want to be. I am remaining as well. I am nearby. This place will not be remembered, and the memory of everything that started this can finally begin to fade away, as the agony of every tragedy should. And to you monsters trapped in the corridors, be still, and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace, and perhaps more, waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, friend. My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. I'm sorry that on that day, the day you were shut out and left to die, no one was there to lift you up into their arms, the way you lifted others into yours. And then, what became of you? I should have known you wouldn't be content to disappear. Not my daughter. I couldn't save you then. So let me save you now. It's time to rest, for you, and for those you have carried in your arms. This ends, for all of us, in communication. To summarize that nuclear bomb you just listened to, or skipped to if I put the timestamp on the screen, Henry, the nigga that was just talking, built this place and instructed you to get all the animatronics here on the last day so he could destroy all of them and set people's souls inside them free. Except for William, Springtrap. He's going straight to hell because he killed all them kids. And he killed Henry's daughter. Remember the girl in the FNAF 2 minigame? That was Henry's daughter and Henry fucking killed her, my nigga. She was also locked out and became the puppet after she died. Now this is literally the most perfect ending the series could get. We still don't know the buy of 87 or what the fuck is in that box. But besides that, everything has been wrapped up to my knowledge because I might be forgetting some shit. But everything has been wrapped up. We know who Henry is. We know who William is. We have a clue of who the fuck, who's possessed by who. Now they're dead and freed. So I have one more game before I lose my shit. And this part is pretty short because there's not much to it. Uh, oh, oh! This game has hella extra cutscenes and easter eggs and shit that doesn't really pertain to the plot. Besides the one you shouldn't have killed, which is just Golden Freddy, aka the first kid that William killed, I'm pretty sure. To summarize it, all this game is is just Springtrap, aka William in Purgatory forever, dealing with these niggas in a custom night. That's really it. That's just a summary of each game put lightly and not too in depth because we be here way longer than I want to be here. There's still shit I haven't talked about yet because the community had to figure it out and put it together themselves that wasn't explained in the game. You wanna know how you figure out who William Afton is? From the fucking books. Besides a goddamn credit scene with his name in it, we found out who William Afton is from the fucking books. The same thing goes with Henry. The fucking books, not the game. No, spin-off books, bro. Now, with community help and stuff I've talked about throughout this entire video, I'm gonna put this timeline together by game release so you can see how fucked up this shit is. For real, for real. Let me cook. FNAF 1, we used to play as Michael Afton looking for his dad, William Afton, in a location. We don't find him here. FNAF 2 is a prequel where we play as Jeremy Fitzgerald, who isn't important besides the fact that he's the night guard or the victim of the Bite of 87 where Mango bites off his frontal lobe. 
the community figured that out themselves. We don't even know if we're for sure right about that. Thanks, Scott. We also meet Purple Guy, and we also see a kid he kills, Charlie, the daughter of the co-creator of Fred Bear Animatronics, who was very important later on. FNAF 3, we either still play as Michael Afton looking for his dad or some other random nigga. It's most likely some other random nigga because it wouldn't make sense for Michael to be dead this early after he burns down the building. You'll see why it makes sense for him to be alive and not be here for FNAF 3 later on, trust me. We learned that William killed all those kids back then and stuffed them into suits and came back to finish the job, which ended up in him dying. Supposedly. We burn down the tourist attraction which frees the four original souls, but William is still alive, which leads to the next game. FNAF 4, which is a prequel to FNAF 2, where you play as the son of William F. No, it's wrong. So apparently while making this video, FNAF 4 just got entirely confirmed by a book that just came out a few days ago while making this. I'm dead ass serious. All that bullshit I was talking about in the early FNAF 4 section, scratch that. FNAF 4 in actuality is just a bunch of fucking experiments ran by William Afton involving hallucination gas. The Diamond Ambitronics, they're not even real. Nigga, they're not even dreams. They're fucking mannequins. They're just Nightmare Ambitronics because of the gas from William. William has been kidnapping kids and putting them into these experiments to see how they react and what the fuck happens to them. This also makes Midnight Motorist canon and canon to the fact that FNAF 4 takes place after Sister Location and that Sister Location is way ahead of 4 in the timeline because of the secret cameras in the custom night or the inner night where you put type in the code and see the 4 room on the TVs. I'm frantic as hell right now because I'm pissed right now. What the hell? Well yes, we do play as the crying child and William Afton's son. We're also just getting experiments on by William Afton. That Fred Bear plushie that was talking to us, that was just William Afton. We learned that through the, not only the books, but the fucking, the hints with the Fred Bear plushie with the radio one of the custom nights. And then there's a, you know what, fuck it, I'm mad now, rant time. I don't know what in God's name possessed Scott Cawthon to put important lore, game breaking lore, in outside sources. Books that I have to buy from outside sources. Why the fuck would you do that? It's not side content, no. It is main story content that you need to know or to understand some of the things about this game and its story. Why in God's name would you do that? But I hate the fact that the series flip swaps between sci-fi and just paranormal activity because Scott can't choose if he wants the shit to be scientific or he just wants the shit to be like a ghost story or not. And there's just so many instances of it's one or the other. And on top of that, like I said before, Scott isn't that great of a storyteller he's not horrible but you could tell he just does shit on the fly and he'll put whatever that looks cool in at a moment's notice without really thinking of how it affects the story until after where he has to fix it and then he does something else on top of that trying to fix it so it's like putting a band-aid on a fucking cannonball wound thankfully since everything wrapped up in ultimate custom night the new games are a separate story from this storyline it is still ass like, I don't fuck with the Mimic at all. I don't know, man. It, the Mimic just doesn't hit for me whatsoever. Like, like I, w I wish Vanny got more screen time, bro. Like, like everybody else says, I wish Vanny was used more. She gets shit on. And not in a good way in Security Breach, bro. Like, literally, she does. she's on screen for like seven minutes or less in Security Breach. With like two voice lines, bro. Like, she, get, she got done dirty in that game, bro. Maybe we'll see more of her in the books. <laughs> Last thing I want to mention is the movie. I hope it stays grounded, man. I don't want it to get too crazy with the lore like it is now, bro. Like, keep it at the vibe that you said, Vin William Afton, bro. It's like the first three games. Keep it there. It will be good, okay? It will be good story-wise, okay? Everything else, y'all just got to execute. But story-wise, keep it grounded, okay? Keep it to one, two, three. You'll be good. You'll be good. But knowing so he's probably got some other fuck shit planned for the movie. We just got to wait and see, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Another month, another long ass gap before another D-Mob upload. What's good, y'all? I hope y'all been good while I was gone again. <laughs> Hopefully, y'all vibe with this in the bangs and the algorithms. This is my first real gaming video, or gaming commentary video, really, because I did the Call of Duty video. But my first real gaming commentary video, especially on FNAF, and niggas are really hyped about FNAF right now because the movie coming up. How do y'all feel about that movie? Y'all think it's going to be good or trash? Let me know in the comments. Not gonna lie, like last time, I'm pretty hot for my next video. But yeah, this one did take a long time, but I'm happy with the final product, you feel me? So whatever I come up with next, I just have a good-ass feeling about it, you know what I mean? Another thing, 
we not that far from 2.5k or 3k we gonna hit it soon bro i can feel it bro i can feel it if this video does good i can feel it bro Tr i swear to god i can you guys gotta ride with me bro because trust i'm gonna keep putting out heat like this in the tyler video and my steven universe video because i love making that video that's probably my favorite video to this point right now trust me y'all gonna love it here just stick along for the ride and that's all i got man if you if you got this far thank you i appreciate it if you like what you saw and you're new subscribe man you're gonna love it here like i said it's good you're gonna love it here i promise if you're not new like the video though tell a friend about me he gonna love he or they or she is gonna love it trust me i'm out love y'all see y'all next up well can't say it's not gonna can't say it's not gonna be another month but hey it's gonna be heat when i drop it trust me i love y'all man peace